All right, guys, question for you. What is the biggest source of bugs in your app? Yeah. Ah, <laughs> sure is. Git commit. That's what I'm here to say today, that git commit is the source of almost 100% of all the bugs that make their way into your app. All the late night screw ups, the bugs that bring down production, everything, come back to this command. So we should pay attention, right? The other thing to put out there up front is writing bugs is inevitable. We're imperfect people, we write imperfect code. So let's just come to terms with that. But what we can do something about is when we catch these bugs. So I made a little chart. <clears throat> it's basically when we notice bugs and how much it sucks. So if we catch them early, it sucks a little, right? We have to you know, change what we're doing, we have to fix the bug. But if those bugs make it all the way through to production, that hurts. So tonight, what I want to talk about is how we can use Git to catch more of those bugs in those earlier stages. Pretty simple, right? Now, just one other disclaimer. Um, Git has a really long tail of stuff you can know, um, and this won't go into much depth. So if you're a Git wizard, uh, maybe you won't get too much out of tonight. But if you're like me and you use Git really pragmatically, hopefully you'll come away with uh, a few simple things that'll help up your code game. <laughs> so yep, my name's Michael. I am a software person at Marketplacer. So uh, yeah, if you um, dislike the wine, talk to MP, I think. Don't know where he's gone. <laughs> so of those, uh, those stages in that chart, staging changes is the first. So um, let me just put a question out to people. Who's ever run this command? Yeah, right. So it happens, but the thing about this command is it's basically letting down our defenses, the first line of defense uh, for bugs into our application because staging changes is that first of those potential places where we can catch bugs. So what I want to talk to you about is git add p. So this is Git's patch add mode. I'm sure a lot of you uh, are familiar with and use that command, but I'm also sure that many of you probably don't. So um, I'm just going to quickly jump into some code. So for the coding, I'm sorry I don't have a more uh, creative example. Yeah, 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 here it comes. True. How do I do that again? All right, cool. Whoa, wow, sorry, it shocked you. So the Toy Robot Project is um, a project that maybe many of you have written. Um, you basically have a robot class, and this robot responds to commands like place on a table, move forward, turn left, turn right, report. Um, it's a pretty standard little test Ruby app. So to demo Git's patch add mode, um, let's say we've got some new requirements. Um, our robot can move, turn left, right, report. Um, we want to make it speak. So let's just jump right in, add a new test. Oh. Describe, we'll make a new method called speak. It prints to stand it out. Expect robot.speak to output. I think this is the way we do it. And if we run that test, oh, oh it's a failures. <laughs> Let's just run that one test. <laughs> One, five, two. Oops. Yeah, so undefined method. So let's add that method on our robot, uh, just here. Um, puts maybe I am robot. Cool. So we've finished the feature. Now um, we could git add dot, we could commit, but git's patch add mode. Once you go patch, you, you never go back. It's, uh, 
That wasn't that funny. Come on, guys. <laughs> um, so git add dash p walks us through an interactive uh, staging of the changes that we've made. So we get the chance to um, check our work. And sometimes we commit after doing a whole bunch of stuff. Our mind's been all over the place. This is the first line of defense. So always run patch mode. It's super, super important. So yes, we want the speak method. Um, oh. Yeah, yeah, so there's the derp. I added the derp before because I wanted to show something that we don't want. Um, the number of times I catch crap like this uh, at the point of staging changes is amazing. So we just say uh, no. Sorry, I'm rushing through this, but this interactive staging edit, uh, uh, staging um, console, for those of you that uh, haven't seen it, we've got a bunch of options for each of these little pieces. So do we want to stage this hunk? Yes, no, maybe a bunch of others, so we'll say no here, and we want our test. So now if we run git status, you'll see that we have staged our robot changes, uh, we've got our spec, and there's also some other changes to that robot file that we don't want, and that's perfect. So let's just quickly check out a branch, uh, speaking. Oh, sorry, don't mind that. <laughs> And yeah, let's commit. So add speaking ability to robot. So that's Git's uh, patch add. Oh, uh, don't mind that. <laughs> so let's jump back in. So that's a, a basic overview. We'll get back to that, we'll get back to that. Um, one thing to note about Git's uh, patch add mode is it won't stage new files. And this really frustrated me for a while because I wanted to use it all the time. But pretty often we introduce new files um, what you generally have to do is run git status uh, and see your new files and you can add them manually. Nothing wrong with that. I'm pretty sure that's how most people do it. But um, I want to talk about an alias um, that I use. Um, and it basically means add all files interactively. Uh, super hacky, um, but effective. And I'll share the alias at the end of the talk. So this one is actually courtesy of my friend and colleague uh, slash DNL, who also works at Marketplacer. Um, neither of us are really bash programmers, but he's come up with this cool little alias. Um, so shout out to, to Dan. Um, yeah, I'll just show you how that one looks. So jumping back to our project, um, let's just quickly remove the derp, because that was what broke all the tests before. Um, so let's say, I don't know, um, the client comes back to us and says, yep, the speaking is fantastic, but we want you to add artificial intelligence to the app. And we say, cool, yeah, of course. <laughs> so um, we're going to add a brain file, um, class brain, um, and we'll add a test. Uh, Look, brain, um, and let's give it a method, uh, ran, random thought, and it returns a string, I guess. Um, so we'll say expect maybe brain dot new dot random thought to be a string. So we'll run that, um, but use bundle exec for me, <laughs> our spec. Whoop. So yep, we have undefined constant brain. We'll require our brain, that's important. <laughs> yep, no, save the file. Cool, so undefined method random thought. So we'll add our random thought method um, and we'll just jump straight to implementing it. Um, so let's say thoughts. Um, uh, oh, hey, oh, the wine is crap. Oh. <laughs> Beer is better. Beer is better. Um, what if there were no rhetorical questions? That's a good question. Um, and we'll just make the random thought, just take a random thought. So we'll see if that passes. Yep, it does. 
cool. Um, it's kind of not really necessary, but we'll just we'll just change the speak method for completeness. Um, let's just say brain dot new dot random thought. Oops. Cool. So now to the point. Um, let's run git a, which is this alias that I'll share at the end of the uh, end of the session. Actually, first let's run git add dash p. I won't stage anything now, but I'll just show you what it does. So we can see the change to the robot class. Um, we would have staged that. That's it. End of story. So this is what it's like using just the plain patch mode. Fine for just editing. A little bit annoying if you're adding new files. So git a, same thing, but it walks you through all of your new files. It's fantastic. So yep, we want that. Yep, looks good. Looks good. So um, add artificial intelligence, did I spell that right? To robot. Oh, hey, a whole bunch of red. Um, so this is actually Ru RuboCop. Instead of skipping over it now, um, I'll just give a brief introduction. Um, many of you probably use RuboCop. I want to talk about it a bit more later. Um, it's a linter that runs at the point of commit. So that's another tool in your toolbox. Um, let's just jump back to slides. So I just wanted to add a brief slide on Git GUIs. So these are things like, uh, I don't know, source tree or Git tower. Um, a lot of people use these for interactively staging changes, and that's cool. Um, if it works, that's, that's great. They're um, whole applications designed to help you stage things intelligently. Um, personally, I don't use them, but I know a lot of awesome developers do, so, you know, more power to you. So that's it for staging changes. Committing changes. So I remember a point in time when I started to realize, I think actually a, a good friend of mine sat me down and shook me by the shoulders and said, no, commits are sacred. Like sloppy and fragmented commits go hand in hand with fragmented code. So when it comes to committing changes, I just wanted to talk about four things. Commit content, what actually goes in, uh, the messages, pre-commit hooks, which we can run, and what it means to craft branches. So first up, commit content. A lot's been said about this stuff, so I won't spend too long on it, but just to recap, I believe that commits should correspond to logical units of work. So some people commit every five minutes. Uh, I think actually one famous developer has a timer and his screen flashes red if he hasn't committed in five minutes. That doesn't really appeal to me because it means that your commits end up being random. Like what are you even, what, you know, what, what's your... Yeah, and it's, it shouldn't be a backup strategy. But hey, each to their own. So I think commits should be self-contained. They should have content that matches their message. That's really important. Um, yeah, standalone and self-contained. And what I mean mostly by this is a commit should be revertible. So um, you're doing a discrete unit of work. And if that unit of work is no longer necessary, you should be able to run a simple revert on that commit. and the fact that it's pulled away out of, uh, the fact that it's reverted should make sense in a, a logical way. Um, and I believe that commits should have both code and tests. Um, I do love TDD, but I'm not really here to shove it down your throats. The point is that um, as a rule, you shouldn't aim to have a, a commit uh, add feature or add method to X and then a commit maybe two commits later add tests for X. That goes hand in hand with keeping your commits logical and self-contained, that code and tests should go together. So that's pretty much it. Commit messages, um, again, not gonna say too much about this because heaps of stuff's been written. Um, probably the main point is like Google, how to write commit messages, because the top result is really good. Everyone refers to it. Just a brief recap though, there's a few main points. Um, just before we talk about these though, I think this comes back to broken window syndrome. Um, so it, it's about choosing to be rigorous, um, choosing to be consistent and put in the effort because when you do those things, it helps force up the rigor of the rest of your work. It's just an opinion I have, but um, I think it's important. So start off with a capital and no trailing period. Use the imperative mood. 
So when I first heard this explained, it was a bit like ambiguous, like no one knows what the imperative mood is, but a good little helper, um, just ask yourself or say, if applied, this commit will fix issue, like no. So if applied, this commit will fix issue with mobile nav. So that's a, just a simple way to remember that one. Uh, Multi-line commit messages are good, um, especially if you've got substantial changes. Um, and to do that, just omit the dash M with your commit. Um, and yeah, again, just use the body to explain what and why, not how, because the contents of the commit explain how. And one more, limit the subject to 50 characters, the body to 72. This is all stuff that, you know, the guy who's got that top ranking blog post came up with, but it, I think it works pretty well. So pre-commit hooks, um, that was all the nasty red we saw. Uh, it wasn't red when I ran through it before, so I'm not really sure what I did. But um, I use overcommit. Um, I'm sure some of you do as well. It's a Ruby-based um, Git hook module gem. So just install it like so. Um, and I think the simplest way to demo is, yeah, just to show you. Um, I can probably also show another handy alias uh, that I use. Um, git uncommit, super handy. Like you always commit stuff and then realize uh, you're not quite ready or whatever. Um, personally, I always commit like a whip commit when I'm switching between branches because I hate stashing. Um, and just hopping back to your branch and running git uncommit is super handy. So now, oh, excuse me, <clears throat> we've got all our changes here. Um, so I'll just recreate all that nonsense that we saw before. Um, so we'll add all those changes. Uh, we'll try to commit again. So we'll just like look into some of this stuff. So I think with this project, I'm running, yeah, Reek and Rubocop. Um, this is just a Ruby project, so those are two that make sense. Um, there's so many uh, uh, overcommit modules, and you can write your own as well. So Rubocop is great for syntax, um, uh, style, um, and some uh, sort of code smell and quality um, flags, I guess. So um, I think, yeah, okay, that's why. So I'm running some very, um, very pedantic config here, but the point is it's quite customizable. Um, you can set it up how you like, so it doesn't have to yell at you for stupid stuff like you know, missing documentation comments if you don't want that. Reek is a little more intense. Um, so Reek is focused on code smells. So there's a whole bunch of, um, excuse me, uh, default um, linting rules that Reek uses, and it's much more oriented on uh, around your architecture and code, yeah, code smells. So it's worth checking out. And if you do JavaScript, um, yeah, check out many of the others there. So I thought I'd just briefly show you what the config looks like. Um, so we're just running Rubicop, Reek, and just one that I tend to run, which checks your commits for merge conflicts. And surprising how often they make their way in, so it's just nice to know that they'll be caught. So that's over commit. Um, yeah, so lastly, when it comes to committing, this idea of crafting branches, so what I mean by crafting branches, I guess it means um, really caring about your commits. It's a common theme, I suppose, but there's this idea that well-structured branches make your bugs stand out. Like when your commits uh, follow a very logical order and each commit uh, has some integrity, um, bugs really do stand out. And it's probably easier to explain when we flip that around Branches that are all over the place really swallow bugs because it's hard for anyone to understand what's going on. So that affects us when it comes to the PR, but uh, the pull request. But uh, yeah, also just while we're while we're working in our branch. So yeah, I have to give a controversy warning because uh, I know that from the dawn of time, two ancient like, civilizations have been battling out uh, like the, the rebases and the mergers. Um, and I, I personally am a rebaser. Um, I really like the power that it gives, but I really understand the case for merging. So for those of you that aren't really familiar with the ins and outs of that, <clears throat> that battle, merging is uh, a very safe and honest way to work. 
And rebasing is basically rewriting history. So uh, it can be quite dangerous. And if you're not sure, uh, just don't do it. Like, find out how things work, um, try little bits out here and there. Um, but I think when you do learn some of the tools, particularly when you're working in your own branches, um, rebasing can really give you some extra tools in your tool belt to help you create well-structured branches. So what I mean by crafting branches, um, yeah, well, firstly, um, on a semi-related note, use branches. Um, doesn't really apply if you don't. <laughs> But actually, it wasn't that long ago I was working at a company where we just committed to master. Um, so yeah, at Marketplacer, we have feature branches, uh, branches for fixes. There are other strategies like Git Flow, which I'm sure um, some of you have seen and maybe use. Um, they're a bit more intense. But as long as you're branching out, uh, using branches and respecting them, that's good. So one way to craft your branches is to always stay in touch with your branch. And one way to do that is this Git alias that I use. Um, it's just Git log, but it's just prettified, and it's how I like it. So I have a Git alias Git ls, which is just log short, and lsb is log short for my branch. So running that shows me what's in my branch. And when you're constantly reminding yourself of that, it keeps you in check, um, and it helps keep you focused. So into the rebasing and rewriting history, um, I do think fix-up commits um, can be really useful. So fix-up commits are a way to amend commits that you've made early on in your branch. And I'll give a quick demo of that. The good thing about fix-up commits is they can be safe for working in a team environment. So um, yeah, a little more on that soon, but um, yeah. <clears throat> so um, when you start delving into the territory of rebasing and rewriting history. One tool that uh, has saved me many a time is called the ref log. Um, and it's basically a log out of everything you've done in Git. And Git is amazing. It keeps track of everything. And as long as you've committed stuff, the ref log can save you. Um, just quickly, I thought I had to say the obligatory golden rule of rewriting history. Don't do things that require you to force push up to shared branches. Um, <laughs> because then people will hate you. So just a quick demo um, of those things. I don't really know what else we can add to our like robot project. Um, let's just add some more methods. Doesn't really matter. Yay. Um, and count to oh, to ten. Um, puts, uh, I don't know, is it one to ten? This really doesn't matter at all. Uh, number. Puts, number. Don't know if that'll work and it doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> so, um, so let's just run git ls. So this is just my pretty log. Um, I think I stole this one from Upcase. Um, this is everything we've got. And git lsb is just what's in my branch. So there's one commit in my branch. Cool. Um, so let's just say we've pushed this commit up. Um, but what we've done now actually really logically belongs with that commit. Um, what we can do, instead of adding another commit off a fix, fix mistake with speaking, you know, boo-boo, oops, um, we can run a, use a fix-up commit. So what that looks like is git commit dash dash fix-up and then the SHA of that commit. So we've got that there. Let's run. Hopefully, oh, shit. okay. <laughs> okay, I just disable that. So now when we run git lsb, we've got these two commits. We've got our first one and then we have a second one um, and the start of that commit is just the, the text fix up. There's actually nothing else special about this commit. There's no magic, um, but Git knows that that's a special kind of commit. So because we've already pushed to our branch, we can keep pushing, um, Git push, other people can pull. It's all happy, um, no nasty conflicts and rewritten history. 
But when we're ready to merge this branch, let's say it gets through a pull request or the other person stops working on the branch, whatever the case may be, we can run a command to squash them. So the full command is uh, a little scary. Uh, or actually just dash i um, auto squash master. Um, so this auto squashes our fix ups um, and it's rebasing against master. So there's a lot, a lot, rebase is a bit intimidating when you first start working with it. Um, I actually just alias this to rsm rebase squash master. So we run that and it shows that we're going to fix up the commit and we're going to keep the first one. So we save that. And now when we run lsb, list short in the branch, we just have that one commit. And if we show that commit, uh, we've got our jump and count to 10 as if they were there all along. So it's really dishonest because you're, you're pretending that things happened in a certain order. So it, it does have its risks, but if you want to maintain the branch integrity, it's something you might want to try out. Not for everyone, but very interesting and powerful tool. So I mentioned the ref log. So let's say we screwed this up as it's quite easy to do with Git. Um, enter git ref log. So this is a log of everything we've done. So you can see here, um, this is where we committed adding artificial intelligence, um, adding speaking ability. Um, we made our fix up commit. Uh, it's very, very easy just to jump back and forward in time to get yourself out of any sticky situation. So let's say we just want to go back to where we were. Um, it's actually just a case of running git reset with that uh, SHA of the commit we want to go to. Head is now back at artificial intelligence. So once you master the ref log, and it is intimidating, but once you get your head around it, uh, around it there's really nothing you can do that will completely screw you um, with some caveats. <laughs> Um, I say that because the ref log is actually purged um, usually every month or two, so uh, you can't jump back indefinitely in time to, to save yourself. So that's it for those things. Um, lastly, pull requests. Just figured I should include it, although I don't have too much to say, and the pizza's here. Um, so, yeah, pull, they're good. Use them. Again, I was in a really successful company that didn't use them. Um, so yeah, always request a, a review, and I'm super guilty of this, but even the smallest changes um, can benefit from a review. Um, and yet, no one's above the need for a review, so don't let your managers get away with it, because sometimes that dynamic can fly. And they are good for knowledge sharing as well. Really basic stuff. And yeah, in terms of catching bugs, obviously you want to run some end-to-end -end regression tests. Oh, listing, should be linting. So running linting um, in your Git hooks uh, is a great catch-all. You can actually use tools like Hound to run the same linting that you run locally. So that means everyone that's pushing to your branch, their code goes through the same linting. And we've got a great uh, CI or, um, I don't know, deployment process at Marketplace. So it's something we really, really value. Um, and if you don't have any end-to-end -end tests, just start with a couple. Start with, I can visit the homepage. Um, there are heaps of tools out there to get started. Yeah, so Hound is good, but there are more. So yeah, that's basically it. Um, sorry to just kind of rush through everything. There's so much more that Git can do for you, but I smell the pizza. Um, just a quick summary, always use Git add-p. If there's one thing you take away, please let it be this because git add dot is the devil. It's, it's actually the devil. And git a, if your game, is an alias that makes that a little more pleasant. Just with the disclaimer, it's a really hacky bash hack, so. Yeah, commits are sacred. Just, just respect them <laughs> in, in, uh, in every way that you can. Craft your branches. This one is optional. If you want to stick with um, a pure, honest history, that's totally fine. Um, but if you're interested in this stuff, there's, um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of fun you can have. Uh, yeah, and I guess the, the point is the motivation to, to do that kind of stuff is you can keep your commits more meaningful 
and logical if you amend them. Yeah, always use PRs. Uh, yeah. So just one thing, I, I learned a lot from this course, the Upcase Git course. It's really cool. Um, I haven't done much else with Upcase, but it walks through how Git works, and that's really helpful. So you might want to check it out. So I just want to leave these up. Um, up the top, there's a, a URL where I just share those aliases. Um, so this isn't actually the aliases, it's just what they do. <laughs> but if you, follow, if you copy that URL, you can see them. Um, and yeah, they're stolen from various places and hacked together. They're not great. And everyone has their own aliases, but you might get some inspiration. You might find stuff that you like. So yeah, that's it. Thanks. Mm-hmm.